This is quite exciting. I just noticed that my baby Monstera has two leaves that have started developing the holes in them. I think it's called fenestration. And here is one of the leaves. You can see the hole there. And then the other one is here. Wow. I didn't think it would happen so quickly. I've only had the Monstera for um, a couple of months, I think. And I thought it would be at least a year or two before I started seeing this happen. I met up with a friend yesterday and she asked if I could show in my vlogs how I make my matcha lattes. The first thing you'll need, of course, is some matcha powder. I'm using the Matcha Matsu from David's Tea. If you're drinking matcha straight, and not in a latte, you may want to experiment with different grades of matcha and maybe a better quality matcha, but for a latte, I find this is perfectly fine. You'll need a teaspoon to measure out your matcha powder. You'll need a little sifter to get out any clumps in your matcha powder. You'll need a bowl or some kind of vessel to put in the matcha powder and the water. And finally, you'll need a matcha whisk. There are other tools that you can use to mix your matcha, but I find that this has so far worked the best for me. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my matcha bowl and I'm going to put my sifter right on top of that. Then I'm going to measure out two teaspoons of matcha powder. Here's the second one. I'm gonna shake the sifter to disperse the powder into the bowl. And you'll get to a point where there are all of these large, um, clumps. I'll just take the same teaspoon and just very gently loosen up the clumps and then eventually everything will be nicely sifted into the bowl below. Now I'm going to pour in some boiled water. I just poured in this much. I think it might be around 50 milliliters. Now I'll use the matcha whisk, incorporate the matcha into the boiled water and this water is still very hot i think i boiled it about 10 minutes ago usually you would whisk this very vigorously and there's like different techniques that you can use to whisk in order to create the foam layer on top but because this is a latte it's much more forgiving i don't really need that foam layer because i'm going to be pouring steamed milk all over it so I'm just going to try to make sure everything's incorporated and leave it at that. I'm going to be using oat milk in my matcha latte and I'm going to weigh out around 130 to 140 grams of oat milk. I'm going to take the milk over to my milk frother, which is part of the Bambino Plus espresso machine that hubby and I just got. I'm going to steam the milk with a little bit of foam and then I will come back to show you the rest. I do like my matcha lattes lightly sweetened, so this is about one to two teaspoons of um, just regular squeeze bottle honey. using the one from Costco right now. And then I'm going to pour in my matcha. There's a little bit left, so what I like to do is pour in just a touch more water, shake it about, and add the rest. I'll just give it a quick stir, and then I'll go ahead and add the steamed milk. And actually, the oat milk didn't foam that well today, and I'm not sure why. Usually there's much more foam on top. I'll need to um, pay more attention next time. I tried with a different carton of oat milk today and it foamed perfectly. It looks really good, so I'm going to incorporate the oat milk now. Add the foam. So much better than yesterday. So there is my matcha latte. I was taking my walk this morning and I had the strongest urge to give myself curtain bangs. So that's what we're about to do. I watched a video and a half on how to cut curtain bangs and I think I'm ready. So we will try it. What could go wrong? If anything does go wrong, they will grow back. I'll link the video down below that I watched. I'll link both of them. The um, first one that I'll link is the one that I'm going to be following for the most part, just because I liked the length a bit better. And also the hair mannequin used in that video has um, a texture of hair that's like a little bit closer to my own. You might be able to see all my grays in this video, but um, 
I do not have plans to color my hair. I feel like we should normalize gray hair on women. So I am going to try to embrace my grays. Sometimes they do bother me, I'll be honest, but um, for the most part, I don't really see them that much. Let's do the usual prep where I take um, paper towel. I've wet it a bit with some water and I'm just going to lay that down in the sink to catch all of my hair. I'm basically only using a comb and a pair of hair cutting shears for this video and also two clips. I've also got a water bottle and a brush. The first thing I'm gonna do is um, find my center part. My hairline isn't that low. It's actually quite high up on my head. So I think I'm only gonna cut maybe like an inch to an inch and a half of bangs. And I'm going to draw a triangle to the top of my eyebrow. So that's not a lot of bang, but I'm okay with that. I wanna start pretty subtle, I think, because I have no idea how these are going to look on me. And in the past, I have had bangs, and I feel like they don't look that great on me. So I'm going to cut about this much for my bangs. Should I do more? Is that enough? I'll start off with this, because uh, I don't really know what I'm doing here. So now I'm going to wet this section of my hair and I'm just going to spray water. And I'm gonna cut just below my nose. It looks so much easier on YouTube. I think I'm nervous about cutting bangs, much more nervous than my regular haircut for some reason. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna cut straight across. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about this. That wasn't so hard. I'm just gonna wet my hair again. And then I'm going to uh, do the bevel now. I'm gonna take this part here, go parallel to this line at the top of my head here that goes down towards my eyebrow. I'm gonna take my fingers all the way to the end, making sure this is parallel. My fingers are parallel to this part. And now I'm gonna cut these bits here. It's hard to see. So this should create the bevel. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay, that worked pretty well. Mm. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. So I've got these face framing bangs. And I'm just gonna tidy them up a little bit like this. That's not in the video, but I feel like this will work better for the way I like to cut my hair. All right, I like these. I don't know if they're super even. But I think they look okay. Now I'm gonna let the rest of my hair down. And then I'm gonna take a bit more hair, maybe just this front part, down to my ear. And then I'm gonna blend the bangs into the rest of my hair. I 
things I do when I'm bored at home. Quickly wet this hair. And then I'm just gonna follow the line of the bangs that I already have. And I'm going to cut down like this, very gradually. And I'll do the same on this side. My hair is super staticky today. Even though it's very greasy, I don't know what's going on. Okay. This side is a lot more chunky. I wasn't planning to use my thinning shears, but I think I will just for this part. I think I am done. I'm not gonna style my hair tonight. I'll do that tomorrow. But I'm liking the way this looks. I plan to wash my hair tomorrow morning and then I will try styling them, but even without any kind of wave in my hair, my hair is just like really flat and oily and dirty, I'm okay with the way this looks. All done. I will see you all tomorrow once I've washed my hair and tried to style it a little bit. I'm gonna clean up now. Good morning, everyone. It is the next day and I have washed and blow dried my hair and I've put um, a little bit of a wave in my curtain bangs and this is what it looks like. I don't really like the way they feel. They're a little bit annoying just because I'm not used to having bangs and um, I do remember that when I had um, like a fringe, it would really tickle my eyes. This is a little bit more bearable, but um, getting a little bit of like side bang tickling action over here and I'm not super crazy about that feeling. So I did end up pinning them back last night. I'm gonna see how I get on with the bangs throughout the day. And I do like the way they look. I think they frame my face really nicely. And I think it gives the illusion that my face is actually a nicer shape than what it is. So I'm very much liking the look of these bangs. But um, yeah, we'll see how they feel and whether I can get used to having um, hair a little bit in my face and tickling the sides of my face. But this is what it looks like. I think I could have blended them in a bit more. So maybe if I decide to keep the curtain bangs, I will um, try to make like a little bit of a thicker bang, blending it into my hair a little bit more. But this side, I'm really liking the way it looks. And then this side as well, although I am getting like a little bit of separation every once in a while. Overall, I am pretty happy with them, but I'll be shaking my head a lot to get them out of my face. I think I will have to um, wet my bangs and blow dry them every morning just to make sure they're sitting properly. And I may need to use the flat iron more as well. So that will help um, combat the grease, the drying out of my hair using these hot tools. But uh, my hair, especially when I have bangs, does tend to get greasy very 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 quickly and right now for dry shampoo I'm just using plain cornstarch with a little bit of perfume in it. I'm liking the change I feel like this change 
is a bit different compared to what I normally do with my hair. So usually I'll cut my hair when it's pretty long to collarbone length. So that is like a big change, but style wise, it's always pretty much the same. So this is a new style that I can play with and see how I like. All right, that is going to be it for this vlog. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back very soon with another one and I will see you all then. Bye.